This video starts with inside access on what happens when your car arrives at a dealership. I was lucky enough to talk with the tech who explained what they do in this early process. The technician will remove the delivery wrap. He'll take blocks out of the suspension, which act as like a front end lift for transport. They install brake ducts and wake up the control units. They do a quick drive to ensure everything in the computer is up and running because when they do that wake up, it doesn't necessarily wake everything up unless the car is rolling as well. Like for example, the map can sometimes be stuck in Germany. The TP PMS sensors also don't really work until the car is moving. They're stuck in learn mode until you drive about one mile. It's also interesting, the front splitter is not installed on the car, so they kind of put that in the cabin of the car for the transportation process, and then they take that out of the inside of the car and actually install it at the dealership. The car was dropped off on a snowy Chicago day, complete with snow and ice buildup on the front. A lot of people might be freaking out and go, oh my God, my brand new car just got driven in the snow before we even detailed it. And the reality was it really wasn't that big of a deal and you can actually see the car actually is not that dirty. The car obviously got very wet because it was driven in snow, but ultimately this car is not really any more dirty than any other car that would show up with barely any miles on it right after a delivery from the dealership. It was nice to see some cardboard on the floor there just to kind of keep everything clean because it was winter time and a really fast inspection of the paint showed that it looked like it was in pretty good shape and that kind of cues us in that we have to be extra careful on our wash after we do the wash we can always get a better look at the paint but this first pre-inspection is a good indicator that things look pretty good as we're pulling the car out here you will see 44 miles on the odometer if you've never washed a car while it's snowing out you got to try it it's pretty relaxing and kind of a nice chill experience it also makes for some cool visuals uh, for you guys to watch in this detail i am using hot water I, I always use hot water when it's cold out, even if it's not snowing. It's nice for me because it keeps my hands slightly warmer, especially when I have the wash towels out. But it's also nice because it literally will melt any snow or ice off the car like this car had on it. The other important thing to note is that the car is running. It is a very bad idea on a brand new car with delivery miles to start it and then turn it off two seconds later. Now we do have to move the car a couple times in the detail process. So we really are very detailed. We're very methodical about everything we do, even things that don't really have anything to do with the detail process. So I run the car until it gets up to full operating temperature and then I shut the car off. I am still a huge believer in the multiple microfiber towel wash process. You will see me in future videos experimenting with other microfiber towels. I think that's kind of a fun thing to do. There are a lot of different types of microfiber towels to try this process with, but currently the white one in this video is my favorite, but we'll see if that uh, stays true in the future. I've also had some people ask if they can use like drying towels for this. And yes, any, any towel that's really plush you can use for a wash process. So some of our drying towels are super awesome for this. This first wash is pretty in depth, but there is a second wash, which we're gonna talk about later in the video. So we're gonna jump ahead to the next step, which is the inspection of the paint and paint correction. I believe this was the best condition 992-911 I have ever seen. And even having said that, there were still problems on the car, but if you've seen my other videos, you know that these other cars were really, really bad. So what this car has is pretty minor. However, if this is what I can say safely is the best condition 992 I have ever seen, this is all the proof you'll ever need that your brand new car needs paint correction because they're never perfect and even this car has problems. You would want all this stuff fixed before your PPF went on. You would want all this stuff fixed before your ceramic coating went on. You just don't want your like 25 or 30 mile car to have these problems on it. Because we are doing full body PPF, we do of course have to remove any factory pieces. So this piece has to come off and it's still comical to me. I say this probably in every one of my videos that has a portion. It. These are such a small piece of OEM film. I, I have no idea what they think this is going to stop. And it's only going to just destroy everything around it. So like when you pull that off in four years, you're going to have a stencil of perfect paint and a bunch of terrible stuff around it. I would literally rather have uniform defects in my in my like hip rocker area here than have one section of weird triangle perfect paint and everything else bad. They, they need to redo the way this piece is put on at Porsche to make it much larger and go all the way to the fender and all the way to the door jam so it actually fully protects that panel because what they're doing here is just silly to me. After removing the PPF on the hips of this car, everything looked about right, everything was intact, and if you haven't seen my last video, then go check that out, because we pulled PPF uh, on GT3 Touring, and in this area, we had huge hidden damage and scratches that were really, really bad, and actually could not fully be repaired. So nice to see this car was in good condition. So I'm using an HDO Lake Country orange pad here, and I'm also using CarPro Reflect. 
Now, this is my combo that I like to usually use on Porsche paint, especially Porsche paint that looks like this car does. This car does not have any crazy major defects. If it did have major defects like that GT3 Touring that required crazy fixing in that hip area that I just mentioned where the hidden damage was, that's when you're going to bump up to an HDO blue pad in CarPro Ultra Cut. That is a very strong combination to, you know, remove defects from a car. Because the Porsche only required HDO orange and reflect, which is a low to middle level polish, we now have time to do a jeweling step. And a jeweling step is something you'll almost never hear about, almost nobody does it. And it's because it's, it's one of those things that gives you that last three, four, five percent of the gloss and refinement in the paint. And a lot of people don't even think that that exists. And that's probably why they don't offer jeweling. They see, you know, I did the correction. There's no swirls. That's it. Just because there's no swirl marks in the paint doesn't mean I can like increase the luster or the shine or the deepness or the gloss of what's on that car still. A jeweling step is kind of this really precise, artful, magic step in the end that will, in my opinion, increase gloss and just give you that dripping wet look and like it really goes after that last two, three, four percent of what is in the paint. The paint correction step is probably the most important step of the whole detail because now ceramic or PPF, or in this case both, are going to lock in all of my hard work of making the paint perfect. Once the paint correction is done, we do need to wash the entire car again because at this point the car is clean, but it does have dust literally everywhere. Now in other videos I've showed where that dust builds up and how it looks, and I did not show that in this video, or where the plastic part of the bumper meets the painted part of the bumper, or where the front fender and the front bumper come together and meet. Any spot that has like a crease or a crevice or a gap or anything is packed full of dust. And even when you think you've got all that dust, there's probably more dust in there when we're doing paint protection film and flushing the panels with water and soap to apply the film. So this is a very meticulous process where we really try and flush everything out. I really try and directly shoot water into the gaps and crevices and nooks and crannies of everything to blow everything out. So this wash doesn't have any contact in it. I don't touch the paint with a towel. I just foam the car and then I literally rinse that back off and do a really, really thorough rinse. You might think that's enough prep work to do PPF, but after this we pull the car back inside and we do even more prep work. Now you might think this is going to get like borderline crazy and literally think that I'm the most insane detailer in the world, but I literally flush all of this stuff again with panel prep. So this is slightly diluted panel prep and I'm literally just shooting it into the crevices and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to blow this stuff out with a blow dryer. I have seen other people's installs of paint protection film where sometimes in a panel like a hood or a fender there could be anywhere from four to nine pieces of dust, which is crazy. I don't want any dust in my panels. And to accomplish that, you need to do a complete crazy Looney Tunes prep process like I'm doing where literally we're on like the second time of doing this. And then when my installer will come, he'll still prep some of these panels a third time, even knowing that I've done this because we're literally going for no dust. And if you're going for no dust, you have to do it the crazy psycho way, which is what you're seeing on camera. Spots like this are a gold mine for things that are going to make you want to tear your hair out because if you put film over this and it kind of like goes up and down and it kind of makes like a wave of air, stuff will come out of these vents. So I rinsed this spot on the car outside a lot, but then I literally shot stuff in here, water in here, and then blew it out again. But you don't want specks of dust to literally like waft out of these vertical vents because that can totally happen. If PPF has taught me anything, it's that like the world has crazy physics and when you think something won't come out of somewhere, it usually will. So you really, you really have to be aware of the fact that like dust will levitate against gravity upwards into your film if you don't just go out of your way and really attack all this stuff and try and mitigate everything you possibly can to ensure that there will be no dust. Even things like these rain rails of the convertible top, we want to make sure these things are spotless because we want to tuck the film everywhere we can and we don't want dust to get into anything. And even after we do the wash and all this stuff, you can see there's still crud and dirt and stuff that's in the seams and in the uh, rubber seals of the convertible top. So we still have to clean all of that as well. There's always dirt hiding somewhere and you literally need a car inside and out, even the crevices that needs to be like surgically clean to really get the level of install that I am going for. I wanna show you guys some of the inside steps of PPF now that we're ready to actually measure and put the film on the car. We always usually jump to the section of the video where we're just putting the film on the car. There's a lot that goes into it before that. And I bulk install everything, which is kind of different because a lot of people like to plot. 
So I'm gonna show you kind of the bulk install process and what it looks like. Let's jump into that. The first step is to measure everything on the car and find out how big the pieces need to be and to be as precise as possible. The more precise we are, the more money we will save because we don't wanna overextend anything and then just throw away extra material. We can also measure things like the bumpers and then trim off the top section of that if it's only 20 inches and we're taking that out of a 36 inch roll. We can save a lot of film for a future rocker panel, for example. This is the cut table, which you'll see we're rolling the film out. This is something I've never showed on camera. So this is how we actually measure everything and then cut this out of the roll. You have to be very careful during this step because there's cap sheet on here and we don't really want to disturb the cap sheet or like make it wrinkler or anything like that. And then when we're done, we literally roll it back up and tape the roll so it's secure and won't budge or come un unraveled in the box. You can see I cut this back section for the rear hatch and then that smaller roll is actually gonna be the perfect size for the wing. So there's very, very little waste on material for this back section of the installation. I'm mixing my slip solution here and you can see this is distilled water and then I'm using Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo and I'm measuring it literally with a baby aspirin syringe because I'm a crazy person and want it to be literally precise and perfect every time so my slip solution isn't changing. And then you'll also see I'm using CarPro gel uh, which is a new thing that I've been using that I really, really like and it really makes this the positioning and the, the flexibility of the installation a lot easier. There's there's a lot, it's a lot more forgiving basically. So once we have all that stuff sorted out we can actually start putting film on the car and start squeegeeing it out and just begin the very long process and tedious process of literally full body ppf every panel gets film on this car it's important to note that we try to tuck every edge and we'll talk more about that in a second but you know we, we kind of manually extend all the edges and then you can see we push that in and we don't want any visible edges on, on a top facing like edge cut of a panel so we, we avoid that at all costs sometimes you can't avoid it but sometimes you can and if you can we're definitely going to you know tuck everything so this piece of trim can actually be pulled up and then we can tuck the film into this section this is a great spot because it's so high visibility that putting a seam all the way inside the under that trim is going to be really helpful so we actually pull out that other trim but we'll show that later on so this section is going to be seamless and most of that door is going to be seamless and that rear hatch section is going to be seamless too so when you walk up to this car from like an eye level standpoint looking down at the doors and everything it, it literally is going to be a 100 percent seamless install you will not physically be able to see an edge because it's all tucked under door trim let's jump back to this rear trim on the convertible area so this piece slides out and it was pretty tricky to actually remove it but once we slid that out we were able to fully tuck the film into this section so again that section i previously showed this one right here that's fully tucked and then that wraps into this convertible top section and then once we put this back in this whole section is 100 percent seamless fully tucked in and you know i was talking to a customer of mine that did a full body job with me recently who loves the work that we do he was telling a neighbor of his about my work and he said wow that sounds really expensive he said he had a guy who did it for significantly less one of the things you're going to see when someone does something significantly less than what we do is that they simply do the installation differently that doesn't necessarily mean they're doing it wrong especially if they're doing it for less money there's just different ideas of what good value is in that situation so that person who does that install for significantly less probably doesn't pull all those trim pieces out that i just showed you and literally made the film invisible it's probably just plotted and then edge cut directly into those panels which means when you walk up to it you're going to see you know the seam lines and those seam lines are really hard to see when the car is brand new and I first deliver it. But when it's two years old, a chalk car like this is going to have black dirt lines. Those will never form on this car. This car is like 99% seam free. So you just can't get a dirt line if there is no seam. That seam is tucked into the door jam behind trim. There's about a million different things that I do on an installation similar to that that makes the cost more because our labor time is like twice as much as someone else's labor time. We might spend four to five days doing a PPF install on a car like this. They might spend two and a half to three. That's why the cost is different. So a status detail installation process is not for everybody because it's expensive. But if you do seek this crazy level of installation, there are people out there like myself who will go this extra mile to, to really make it perfect. And just to prove that point a little bit more, Here's a little more of the shots of just us tucking things like in the windshield like this could easily be edge cut it could also easily just be trimmed down like a quarter inch we trimmed this 
all the way down into the rubber trim. So again, there is no seam on this part. So when this convertible top is down, you will never see a seam, you'll never see a dirt seam because it's tucked all the way into that trim piece. You don't have to do it that way. This is just going the extra 0.001%. Look, you're, you're, you're chasing something that's kind of crazy. And to that point, not everything can be tucked. So there are spots on the car that do have edges. That's why I said earlier, 99% edge free. These panels can't be wrapped. Even if you take the bumper off and you wrap it, there will be vibrations in the car and that film will pop back out. So there are panels where they're like adjacent together. There are adjacent panels kind of like these and the ones in the front between the bumper and the uh, front fender that will have seams. So not everything can be done that way. There are limitations that the car gives me, not that myself is giving me, right? Like I will, I will tuck everything I can tuck, but sometimes the car will say, you can't tuck this. And that's where, where it ends. You know, that's where it starts and ends is a conversation of what, what do we do? As tech film continues to just wildly impress me with clarity. When I look at the orange peel of this car, it literally looks slightly better with film on it than it did with film off it. So it actually like smoothed it out with film on it, which is the opposite of all of my experience with every paint protection film I've ever seen or used and that's one of the reasons this stuff is just so impressive. On top of that the built-in hydrophobics are great but it also accepts a ceramic coating on top of that so it's like extra hydrophobic which means bugs come off easier, the self-cleaning is nicer, it is self-healing so all the little micro scratches and swirl marks will just self-heal out in the sun or with a heat gun. It is eight mils thick which is thicker than a lot of films because a lot of films say they're eight mils thick but they're actually like 7.2 or 7.5 when you actually look at the spec sheets. And it's important to note, I am not sponsored by any company. I'm not sponsored by Aztec. I just chose Aztec because I believe it's the best and I speak highly of it because I literally do think it is the best film on the market. So this car is brand new and has very low miles and there's weird specks and like, not staining, but like just dirt and specks on the inside. It almost kind of looks like someone sneezed all over the inside of the windshield. I don't know what happened there, but there's always stuff to clean on the inside of a brand new car. And this is one of the reasons you want me to do it and not the dealership to do it. I just assure you that we're going to do it correctly and perfectly. And I don't know what chemicals are gonna use for some of this stuff. And just, you, you don't really want the dealership to do the prep if you have a good detailer. A lot of people have questioned us, you know, why are you cleaning a brand new car or is leather like with leather cleaner we've discussed this a couple times in other videos but you you guys have to remember and understand a lot of people are in and out of this car especially like from the time it literally leaves the plant in germany to like the dealership there's probably like t at least 10 different people in and out of your car between like different ports and if your car gets stuck in a port and needs some work then more people end up in the car and then the people at the dealership are in the car and moving it around. Like we want your new car to feel new to you, which means we're like scrubbing all the other people out of your car, right? So when you get in your car, you're the first one in the car. And more importantly than all of, the, of that, these packages include leather ceramics. So we, we, we really do need to prep the car properly, which means you need to clean the leather, then shoot like Gian Prep, which is like an, a, a pre-diluted IPA. And that kind of preps the leather correctly for the ceramic coating to go on it. So those are like the main reasons we're, we're cleaning the way we do. But in my opinion, it's just as important, even if we weren't doing ceramic coatings, that we would still, we, we still do this. If you're not doing ceramic coatings, it's still important um, to just make the car feel new to the customer at this point. We're putting CarPro Dark Side on the tires here. This is a relatively new product. It's very similar to Q2 Tire from Gion, which I really, really like. This has a very similar appearance. Um, I think Q2 Tire actually has a better overall appearance in terms of, this is strictly a personal preference thing, but I think Q2 Tire has a better overall appearance, but I do believe Dark Side will last considerably longer. So if you want durability, you're probably gonna want Dark Side. If you want just pure aesthetics, you're gonna want Q2 Tire. But this is a highly personal choice, so you might actually end up liking the way Dark Side looks better, and it'll just be more durable. So this is kind of a personal, personal decision on what you want your tire to look like. Um, both of these products are in the Car Care Store, and almost everything I use on this car is actually available in the Car Care Store. So if you're interested in seeing what I use or want to pick anything up that I kind of have the seal of approval on, check out statusdetailstore.com. You're seeing the glass ceramic go on here. So the glass ceramic was already applied. Now we're actually just removing it. Typically when I remove a glass ceramic, I'll spray Gion Cure or CarPro Reload onto the glass to kind of help loosen it up because some of the stuff can actually be pretty hard to remove. 
um, but once you spray that on there it actually wipes off pretty nice you have to do this a couple times and then use a couple towels and it'll basically just wipe off to be this really really nice crystal clear glass that is just wildly ridiculously hydrophobic you'll see the ceramic coating going on and actually in a future video you're going to see a new applicator because we just changed applicators recently and uh, i'll talk about that when i show it on camera but these are still great i still offer these in the store but in the store i will be offering the new uh, applicators very very soon all the ceramic coatings we use are going to be g technic we really like g technic v5 came out on may 15th so we're actually using v5 now in all the cars which is also amazing that doesn't mean v4 is bad these are both very very good coatings they both last an additional two years over your uh and then we actually have even newer packages in the store now that i just updated everything to our new system so now we have a five-year coating and then we have a seven-year coating and then we have a 10 and a 10 plus year coating as well and uh, i'm really excited about those so anyone coming in for quotes now we'll be seeing those new prices and new packages now this is a ceramic coating going on the soft top and this stuff is super cool it's like crazy witchcraft once you put this product onto this fabric it literally will bead water like it's painted which makes it really easy to keep clean and it's a really tricky installation process because you really got to be careful of not over spraying this onto the glass or the paint and if you do you basically need to wipe it off immediately because it'll basically like stick to it like glue almost so when you get close to the edges, you can just spray it into a towel and then wipe it onto the fabric versus spraying it onto the fabric. But anything that's like a large area, like the very top, you can see I just sprayed it directly on. I do sell this product in my car care store, but I cannot express enough. You have to be careful when you're installing this. If you just spray it all over the place and get it all over the glass and the paint and don't realize and it cures for like an hour, you're, you're going to have a little bit of a mess on your hands. So I've seen people even like mask the car off to do this. I don't think that's necessary if you're working really smart and really carefully. Um, but I just want to like put a huge disclaimer on this. Be very, very careful if you buy this and install this. It also works on floor mats. So if you want to like not put rubber mats in your car, but you want your fabric mats for like winter time, for example, you can take these out of your car, put them on your lawn, and then just hose them down in the fabric ceramic and you'll be good to go. The product is G Technic Smart Fabric. And again, that is sold in the store as well. And that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am very sorry for the delay in videos. We've been so wildly busy that it's been a little crazy. So I've had to slow down video production to kind of keep up with detailing production for all the cars. Most of that is because our videos are doing so well. We have a video that's approaching a million views. We have a video that did a half a million views, a video that did about 100,000 views recently. Our follower count has exploded. So we have a lot of traction on YouTube right now, which is really cool. We get so many phone calls. We have more out-of-state customers than we have in-state customers. We have amazingly cool cars coming for awesome details that we will film. And I'm going to do my very best to ramp up video production so I have more videos coming out soon. If you are interested in a status detail, please reach out immediately and tell me when your car is coming, even if it's five or six months away. It's not a sales pitch. I don't want to be in a situation where we can't help you because you call me when your car is a week away and I'm booked for four months. We've had time frames here where we've been scheduled out for over three months and people call and it's very, very difficult to get them in or they get stuck waiting for two months for their car to get detailed. And I have a list of all my deliveries and delivery dates and it helps me kind of keep track of everything and then do follow-ups and do my best to get you guys scheduled so we can take care of your car. So if you did enjoy this video, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I think we're building one of the coolest communities around for car detailing and people who are really meticulous as well. So I'll see you guys in a video real soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.